morning, everybody. I never thought I would feel safe in a room full of masked men. But here we are. It's great to see you this morning. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Marty, and I'm the minister here at Raven Hill. And it's great that you joined us this morning. And I know that some of you are back to church, having been at home for a while, so it's brilliant that you're here. And I hope that you're glad to be back. I have to say that Sunday has quickly become the highlight of my week. I am just loving being together again as a church family. This morning, God says these words to us as we come this morning to worship Him. He says, come bow down and worship, kneeling before the Lord, your maker. This is our God, our shepherd, and we are the flock led by His care. Let's pray together and praise our God as we pray. Eternal and sovereign God, with awe and with wonder, we come to worship you this morning, to declare your praises, to renew our commitment to you once again. You are all powerful, you're all seeing, you're ever present, you're the God who shaped the universe and has shaped history and has even shaped our very lives. Oh Lord God, we declare this morning that you're all good, that you're all loving, that you're ever merciful. And Lord, we praise you this morning and we thank you for blessing us in so many ways throughout our lives. Thank you for so many times helping us when we've been in need. And thank you, Lord, for forgiving us again and again and again of our faults and our feelings. Oh Lord, you are the one true God. You're always faithful, you're ever constant. Lord, you always challenge us with what is right, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we also thank you for standing by us when things go wrong. Oh Lord, you are all holy, all pure, ever perfect. You always act in beyond ways our understanding can compare. And you always act for our good and for your glory. Lord, we pray this morning that you would forgive us. Forgive us for not giving you the significance in our lives that you deserve. Forgive us, Lord, for not worshipping you as we should. Forgive us, Lord, for not loving you with all of our hearts and minds and souls and strength. Forgive us, Lord, for failing to appreciate your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, for not thanking you for our many blessings. Forgive us, Lord, for losing our sense of awe and our sense of wonder before you. Oh, Lord, this morning, would you open up our eyes afresh to your wonder? Would you open up our hearts again to the magnificent, amazing love you have for us? Would you open our minds to the purpose you have for us? Would you open our spirits to your presence? And help us this morning, assured of the forgiveness that is ours through Jesus, to praise you as we ought to. Oh Lord, you are good. And we thank you that we belong to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, why don't we stand together now and declare how great our God is. Let's stand together and sing how great is our God.
songs, found in the Psalms that we can turn to whenever times in our life are tough. And this morning we're going to read from Psalm 139. We're going to read verses 1 to 18. It'll be on the screen, so I do encourage you to read along. But let me read to you God's word. For the director of music of David, a psalm. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You've laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light will become night around me, even darkness will be not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Right upon them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. We're going to take a look at this part of the Bible just now. Let's pray and ask God to speak to us through it. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for these beautiful songs that you've given us. And we thank you that these songs are not just songs penned by individuals, but they are songs that you have given us. Songs for us to learn from what you're like. Lord, we pray this morning that as we take a look at this psalm, that you would speak to us and that we would accept your word and treasure it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. According to modern psychology, one of the things that all of us need as humans is to feel significant. At some level, we all need to feel like our lives count for something, that we matter. It's true, isn't it? All of us desire in some way to feel significant and important in this world that we live in? Of course we do. But is it not true that from time to time, or maybe very often, whenever we think about our lives, whenever we stop and think about our lives, we feel very insignificant? I wonder over the time of lockdown, did that happen to you at any stage? Whenever everything that you used to do had stopped, Whenever you weren't as busy, whenever you had time to think, were there times over the past 20 weeks or so that you questioned your significance? I reckon there are times like that in all of our lives. Whenever we reflect upon our lives and think to ourselves, am I really significant at all in this world? From my experience and from my observations, I think there are three things that can very often make us feel like we're not significant at all. The first thing I think that can make us feel completely insignificant is whenever we look at the universe. Whenever we take a step back and consider the vastness of the universe. 
Virginia Woolf, in her novel Night and Day, one of the leading characters in it said this, when you consider the things like the stars, our affairs don't seem to matter very much, do they? Have you ever stood back and just considered the vastness of space and just how small and physically insignificant you are? Take a look at this photo, this next one. Do you see that little dot there? Some of you can't see it, it's so small. You see where that arrow is pointing? Where that arrow is pointing is a little tiny small dot. And that photo was taken in 1990. And that photo is from the Voyager 1 spacecraft. And that photo was taken 6 billion miles from the Earth. Sorry, 6 billion kilometers. We're in the metric here, aren't we? And you can hardly see it. From 6 billion kilometers, we are just a pale blue dot. Reflecting on this, an atheist scientist and thinker said these words, and again, they make us feel very small. Listen to what he said, they're up on the screen. He says, look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you've ever heard of, every being who has ever lived, out their lives there. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and card, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every sainted sinner in the histories of our species lived there on a moat of dust suspended in a sun baby. Whenever we consider the vastness of the universe, the scale of it all and how tiny our planet is and then how tiny we are on that planet, it's very easy to feel completely and utterly insignificant. And if you follow along the line of atheism, that there is no God, that the physical universe is all there is and there's nothing outside it, if you follow that thinking along, then the conclusion of atheism is that really you are completely insignificant. Just a speck on a moat of dust hanging in the sun. Maybe some of you here this morning and, and you have been considering the vastness of the universe and wondering how if you have any significance in it. A second thing that I think causes us to consider ourselves insignificant is whenever we lose the thing that we counted on to give our life significance. When we lose the thing that we counted on to give our life significance, suddenly we can lose any sense of significance that we have. Again, in this philosophy, it says, okay, listen, you have no real significance, but you can create your own significance. You can create significance for yourself. And that's what we do, isn't it? We throw ourselves into a career and we try to find significance in that career that we've thrown ourselves into. We want to get to the top of the ladder, we want to be someone in the industry that we work in or in the company that we work in. We find significance in our job. Or maybe we find significance in, in our family in being a father or a mother or a grandfather or a grandmother. Our significance, we, we plot into our family to find meaning and significance in life. Or we give ourselves to sports, to become the best in our sport or in our club or in our, in our team. But here's the problem. Whenever we lose that thing, whenever we lose that thing that we counted on, suddenly we feel so insignificant. When we lose our job, when we lose that loved one we cared for, when we lose our health and health was everything to us, when we lose our mind or our memory or our intellect, 
And education was the thing that gave us significance. When we lose our home or our possessions and stuff, we find our significance and stuff. When that is taken away, we feel insignificant. Or when we lose our power or our position or our status. Or when we lose our morals or our principles or our values. You see, the world around us says that to find significance, you must find it yourself and give yourself to something to find it. The problem is that whenever that's taken away, we're, we're lost. Maybe over lockdown, you experience that to some degree. Not being able to do the things that you felt gave your life significance. And you felt at sea, lost. A third thing then that I think leads to us feeling insignificant is when we compare our lives to others. When we look at others around us and we start comparing ourselves to them. There is a generation of us, it's my generation up below, and we spend hours of our lives on social media looking at the lives of other people. We look at our friends, we look at leaders, we look at influencers, we look at celebrities, and we actually choose to do this. We click follow. And we spend hours of our lives looking at other people, comparing our lives to their highlight reels that I put up there. And here's what happens. Whenever we compare our lives to the highlight reels of other people, we feel insignificant. We don't have the stuff they have. We don't have the influence they have. We don't have the seemingly perfect family life that they have. We don't have the relationships and friendships they have. Look at them, they're significant. But we're not. I wonder, is any of this resonating with you this morning? I wonder, do you feel a sense of insignificance at times in your life? Well, this morning I've got great news. And it's not news that I have made up. And it's not wishful thinking. I have great news from the Bible. I have great news from God's lips. I have great news from God's word. And the great news is that you are significant. Yes, the universe is massive, but you are significant. You're significant to God. And that's what Psalm 139 shows us really, really beautifully in the most beautiful poetic language I think we can find in all of Scripture. The first thing that shows us we're significant from this psalm is that the all-knowing God knows you. The all-knowing God knows you. He, he knows me. I wonder if you'd be happy to read out the next few verses, with the verses 1 to 6. Can we put them on the screen, Andrew? Can you see that okay? Would you be happy to read this out loud with me? You need to say yes if you're in, because if not, this is going to be. Are you, are you in for this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's read this together. And remember, okay, so it's David writing this psalm, but he's writing it for a choir master, which means he's writing it for God's people to say. So what we're going to read here is personal to you if you're one of God's people. Let's read this out. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty to attain. Do you see what God knows about you? You're just a speck on that little pale blue dot. And there is a 
God who created the whole universe and he is so holy and so big and so powerful and so much bigger than we could fathom or understand. And yet who he knows. Well, he knows when you stand up. And he knows when you sit down. And he knows everything you do in between. He knows whenever you leave the house to go to Tesco's to pick up the milk. He knows everything you do. He knows the things that you say, the conversations you have. He knows your deepest thoughts. He knows those things that trouble you and also those things that give you joy. I can understand why David says in verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty to attain. Because it really is mind-boggling, isn't it? The God of the universe knows you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and me. He knows us. That, folks, brings in itself our significance. The fact that God knows you and is interested in your small, insignificant life, and in my small, insignificant life, in and of itself, gives us great significance. A number of years ago, you two played at the Odyssey Arena. It was five years ago now. And Emma and I, well, we had VIP passes. Very nice. So what that meant was that whenever we got there, and we walked past the big queue outside, and seeing people look at us at that big was wonderful. <laughs> and then when we went in, we were brought into a special kind of bar area, and we had access to free food and nibbles and, and drinks, and we could stay there for as long as we wanted before the show. And I imagine there were some, you know, z celebrities in there too, but that was lovely. And then after we left there, we were ushered into a special door into the, the auditorium. And then to top it all off, there's a nice picture here on the screen coming up. To top it all off, we were set on a raised level above the heads and shoulders of everybody else. And this was our view of you two. We were significant that night. We were VIPs, very important people. But you know why we were VIPs? It wasn't because of anything we'd done. It wasn't because of any achievements that we had. It wasn't because of who we are. We were significant that night because someone significant knew us. The Edge's dad was a member of Malahide Presbyterian Church where we belonged. The Edge, if you don't know where have you been living, he's the, the guitarist and you do just in case, okay? His dad knew us. His dad knew us. And his dad was the one who got us tickets, family and friends tickets. We became significant because someone significant knew us and valued us. And this morning that is the way it is with you. You're significant because the God of the universe knows you and he values you and you're important to him and your life matters to him. That is the first thing we see in this psalm that shows us that we are significant people in the eyes of God. A second thing that shows us we're significant is that the all-present God is present with us. The all-present God is always present with us. And again, that shows that we're significant. We're going to read again from the passage. The words are coming up, so you did a good job last time. If you can read it even louder this time, though, it's a bit like Sunday school. You get a big sticker at the end. Let's have a go. Let's have a go. Dude says this. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the 
far side of the sea. Even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. One of the things that the Bible teaches is that God is present everywhere. That everywhere you go, God's presence is there. Whether you feel it or experience it or not, it is there according to the Bible. But what the Bible also teaches is that God's people have his presence with them in a very special way. David, if you're not sure who he was, he was someone who lived a number of years before Jesus, or a thousand or so. And he was the king of Israel. And whenever he was becoming king, a prophet came to him, and a prophet anointed him with oil to signify that he was the next king. And then what 1 Samuel tells us is this. It says, the Spirit of God rushed upon David from that day forward. God's Spirit, God's presence, from that day forward, from the moment he was anointed with oil, from that day forward, God's presence was with David in a special way. And I don't know if you recognize this, but that is true for you if you're a follower of Christ. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, if Jesus Christ is the one that you trusted as your Savior, if Jesus Christ is the one you're living for as your leader, then what the Bible tells us is that whenever you believed, you were seated with the Holy Spirit. That God's Spirit came to dwell in you and with you. this morning that as one of God's people, God is present with you at all times in a special way. God is present with you. How amazing is that? Does that not show that you're significant? That wherever you go, the Lord is with you? That His presence is near and you see, whenever God goes with you, and you'll have seen this, if you're a Christian, you'll have seen this in your life, He doesn't just kind of passively go with you. No, God goes with you and He blesses you, or He sustains you, or He strengthens you. How many times have you seen the blessing of God in your life? How many times have you been in a place where you don't feel like you can carry on in the Christian life, and He sustains you? How many times have you been at a low point and the Lord by His presence has picked you up? You're significant to God. And a sign of that significance is that He is present with you at all times, blessing you, and guiding you, and leading you, and sustaining you. He's not just passively walking beside you. He's actively working for your good. Does that not make you significant? Does that not make you someone of value and of worth? The last thing that we see then in the psalm, and again, the last thing that we see that, that shows us our significance is that the all-powerful God made you. God made you. With all your quirks, with all your different personalities, with all your different habits, with all your different colors of hair and colors of eyes, the Lord made you. And again, we see it in our passage. Let's read these verses together from 13 down to 16. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I knew that full well. My freedom was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Two of the most significant people in my life are my children. They are two of the most significant people in my life. And I know they're significant to you because we're a church family who love kids. But let me tell you something. They are infinitely more significant to me. And why are my 
my kids so significant to me? It's because at some level I was involved in making them. I was involved at some level at, at creating them. And so because I am their father, because I was involved in making them, then they are so precious and so significant to me. But here's the thing that I know. I didn't make my kids. I, I did nothing. The Lord was the one who made them. As my children developed in Emma's womb, the Lord, and it says woven here, but the word is embroidered. He embroidered them together. The Lord gave them their personalities, which are so different from one another. The Lord decided how many hairs they were going to have on their head. He also decided at what stage they'll lose those hairs when they're older. The Lord did this amazing work by knitting together my children. He made them. It is completely and utterly miraculous. Even people who have studied the, the human body cannot conceive or get over the intricacies in them. How our blood vessels and capillaries and all of that stuff fit together. How our organs all work so perfectly together. How we develop all of that stuff. We understand it to some level, but ultimately it's completely and utterly mind-blowing. Do you realize that the Lord has made you? The Lord knit my kids together in the room. But he also knit you together. The Lord gave my kids their personalities and their quirks and he did it for you too. The Lord even ordained where you would live and, and who would be in your family and what you would do with your life. You see the way my kids are significant because I made them? The same is true for you. You're significant and valuable because the Lord made you. I don't know much about handbags, but I do know that a handbag made by Mulberry is significant. I'm not really into cars, but I know that a car made by Ferrari is significant. How much more so a human stamped with God's image? Folks, this morning, if you're here and you're questioning your significance, if in one year or two years or five years or ten years, everything that you've loved has lost and you're questioning your significance, turn to Psalm 139. You may not be significant in the world's eyes. Physically, you're not significant at all in the universe. But you are hugely significant to the maker of heaven and earth. So significant, in fact, that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. That's how significant you are this morning. Please, will you do something for me? Will you stop looking to other things for your significance today? Stop looking at the things the world says make you significant. Just stop it. You, you'll never find true significance there. And instead, look to God. Find all of your significance in Him. This morning, you are significant to God. And my prayer is that as you grasp that, that he will become more significant to you. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you so much that you value each one of us here. We thank you that each of us here this morning are important in your eyes. We thank you, Lord, that everyone matters to you, none more and none less. Father, we pray this morning for those who have lost this perspective. We pray, Lord, for all of those who feel completely insignificant in this world just now. 
Father, we pray for those who've been told there is no God. For those who look out at the vast universe, believing that they are simply a speck of dust on a moat of dust. Those who have been told by the, the philosophy of atheism that they have no real value or worth. Father, we pray too for those who have been brought up in a verbally abusive home. Those who from childhood have been told they're worthless, nothing, nobodies. Father, we pray too for those who try to find significance in things that have now gone, leaving them with a deep sense of loss and emptiness and insignificance. Father, we pray too for those who obsessively compare their lives to others and question whether their life matters at all. Father, for all of these people, and also for each of us sitting here this morning, would you remind us that we are significant to you, that we matter to you, that we're valuable to you. Oh Lord, we're sorry this morning for trying to find our significance in all the wrong places. Help us, Lord, we pray, to find all of our worth and all of our significance in you alone. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's stand together again and sing, reminding ourselves that God is good and that he works all things, even the difficult things in life, for our good and for his glory. Let's stand and sing softly over us. <coughs>
be with you all now and forevermore. Uh, can I ask you to please take a seat? There are no formal announcements this morning. Just to say that we're starting to use the church website a lot more for information and for announcements and things like that. So the website is www.ravenhillchurch.org and that's going to become a hub for more of our information. So please do use that if you can. Uh, okay, I'd like to dismiss now those of you who've got children in Shine or in the crash. You can go and get them. <coughs> And then next will be the gallery and the ushers will usher you out. And then once the gallery is cleared, ushers will come and usher you out from downstairs too. So if you're seated downstairs, please just wait until you're asked.